9090 mobile line team. Roger, Roger, 90 mobile 19, um, traveling over. Effective management of Guyana's forest resources is the primary focus of the Guyana Forestry Commission, enforcing a wide array of regulations while at the same time ensuring that the sustainable exploitation of the country's forest resources continue is constantly being examined and worked out by the Commission. Enabled by a highly trained and dedicated workforce, GFC has been working efficiently with stakeholders and communities to ensure that economic activity in the country's 12.6 million hectares are carried out in keeping with regulations governing the sector. The GFC, to fulfill its mandate, has established with stakeholders guiding policy and legislative framework documents. These include the GFC Act of 2007, the Forest Act of 2009, and these have been revised very recently as the date suggests, as well as a National Forest Plan and Policy of 2011. These documents spell out in detail what it is that we have to do for the forestry sector in order to fulfill our requirements to make this sector contribute. To the national development. From the allocation of forested lands to the point of marketing, GFC has developed a number of user-friendly guidelines that are designed to ensure the sector continues to contribute to the national economy. These guidelines include the transparent procedures for forest reallocation, a code of practice for harvesting, code of practice for processing, and the code of practice for non-timber forest products. In addition, the code of practice for harvesting is developed, has been developed based on the scale of operations. For example, we have one for small operators, which are the state forest commissions, one for the large operators, the timber sales agreements and wood cutting leases, and we also have for the agricultural leases and mining leases. The first thing that has to happen before timber can be exported is that the origin of that timber has to be verified. Uh, that verification process uh, starts first on the ground with the officer that has to inspect that produce that is to be uh, exported. So what he does is what we refer to as, uh, as, an, as an inspection, but what essentially he does is when he goes to the, to the location where the timber is, because it may not be in Georgetown, but wherever that timber is located, he will uh, check that the documentation that, that proves its legality, whether it's a, a removal permit, uh, a transshipment document, whatever document uh, is required to prove its legality is in place, properly filled out. So whatever he's inspecting uh, at that point has been verified as legal. Each piece would have a particular tag number. The tag number now determines, the, defines clearly the origin of the forest produce. So you see this, this particular piece have one tag number. If you check the other one, you would see it have another tag number. And for each one of the pieces, it, it carries a particular tag number. If it is cut into two, they would have A and B part on it. Now. This could be verified by going back to the stump in the forest, where you would clearly see this same tag number is on the stump in the forest, but only thing it is marked stumped on it. Under new regulations, companies are permitted to conduct a limited amount of harvesting in the preliminary stages of their operations. Now, under the 2009 Forest Act, you are allowed to carry out a minimum harvesting, a minimum amount of harvesting to recover 25% of your expenses minus your capital. So, this was basically an amendment that came from the sector that the Commission injected into the new legislation which Parliament approved of. Before any operation will occur for any company, they need to first submit PRS inventory data, 100% PRS inventory data of the trees and the stocks that they are about to harvest. Before any approval for harvesting is um, given to the company, this information, this information needs to be verified by GFC through a 2.5 consistency check. Only after then, if the, the information is accurate enough and it's by 
is in the requirements of the code of practice for pre um, inventory. Only then approval is granted to the company. Immediate steps are taken to investigate irregularities once it is found that any aspect of the regulations has been breached. If for any reason um, the, the unit uh, at the Forest Commission believes that um, the produce um, may not have come from the source that the exporter claims it has come from, then again that, that process will stop right there and a system is put in place for the officers to go back and verify that whatever has been checked. And if, if again it is found to be uh, illegal, um, again it is not allowed to be exported. So it's, it's not a case where uh, whatever has to be exported could slip or sort of pass through the system. Basically everything that has to pass the station, they need to stop and we do a check in transit. They would submit their removal document or their transporting document and we would go out, verify everything that's on the document is on the transport, the, the mode of transportation, where it might be a truck or, or a um, canter or whatsoever. Uh, we're also equipped with a vehicle here that will normally do night patrols and we also um, have the driver stand by any time. So if any truck would drive past the station, we have the driver so we could pursue. Guyana is also a signatory to the European Union's Forest Law Enforcement Governance and Trade Program. This further enhances the country's ability to reduce illegal logging by strengthening sustainable and legal forest management, improving governance and promoting trade in legally produced timber. We're in the process with the European Union now of, of, of negotiating on what legal timber really is and we must be able to, to prove that legality consistently. So it is now establishing or developing a system that the European Union will then review and says, yes, we are comfortable with this, and whatever is coming from Guyana is legal. We have been subject so far to two annual audits of independent forest monitoring. And those audits would have audited 38 indicators on the various criteria and on the various principles. And um, over the past two audits, it makes the case as to how many we have passed and how many we have not passed. And I will say that for both of the years that we have done the assessment, we have reached over 95% compliance across the 38 indicators that we have, we have assessed. We, as a Forestry Commission of Ghana as a whole, has had systems of traceability and, and tracking of timber for a number of years. So it is not something that is essentially new, but rather what we're seeking to do is to build on the systems that are already existing. Part of the tools of implementing the lock tracking system, we have a, a, a handheld scanner that is uploaded with the uh, tag issuance database and permit, permit production information. All right, and This will allow us to know which concession these tags were issued to. So I'm here with some wood along the roadside here. Without going in the concession or so, I can determine who these, who these logs were issued to. So I'll go about scanning this tag. This operates just like a, a supermarket scanner where they scan this tag. The tag is scanned and I click on the information here. And if you can see here, we have all the information based on the, who it was issued to, the tag number, um, what species, um, the permit number. The Commission ensures that stakeholders are given the opportunity to play a meaningful role by having an input in processes that, among other things, help to shape policy. At the GFC, we value our collaboration with stakeholders and we interact with them constantly for public education and awareness and also in the formulation of new policy. And we have regular outreach visits to all different areas. We are not only the head of division and the commissioner will interact with stakeholders, but also forest officers at all different levels. Every association has an aspect embedded within its frame that has to do with social development. So the proceeds that come from the forestry activity from the association go towards helping to build a walkway to go towards a certain school or health healthcare unit or um, any kind of social activity for the communities in which they, they operate. My association basically is a breadwinner of this community. We usually 
supply like 95% of the jobs here or even more without our association and trust me I don't think our community would survive. To date the association is now 14 years old and have a membership of 84. It also holds a total concession area of 56,261 hectares and is currently allowed a total of 29,306 cubic meters to be harvested within a 24 month period. This also creates employment for approximately 240 persons, of which also the community um, is highly dependent on. The community dependence on logging today stands about 90% since this is primarily the main economic activity done in the community. And so we are now really um, benefiting in a significant manner since the community at large is what um, we can see growing significantly. Monitoring the operations of individuals and companies remain an important aspect of GFC's work. To ensure this is effectively done, the Commission has a presence at key locations throughout the country's vast interior. When the truck comes from the back dam, first thing we do is we offload the truck, we collect the uh, removal document that they have, then we re verify or check the information, then we verify the measurement against the species, the tag, and everything. And as long as it's okay, the officer then brands up the, the lug with the hammer, and then it's being packed according to different concessions. Across the country, we have 39 forest stations fixed at strategic location, mainly at the exit point from the forest, by road or by river. The end of the day is that we cover country by placing forest stations at strategic locations so any movement of timber or timber product from the forest can be easily detected and monitored. We also have 10 mobile stations which are stationed within the large concessions and those mobile stations by the way uh, by, by, by the name itself mobile station they, the stations keep moving like trailer houses with the company's operation from one location to the next so the officers can be there monitoring day to day what's happening at the location. At this location here, as we all recognize, there is a bit of clearance here. This is a clearance where the company will establish log market area, where they will extract the logs after felling and stockpile them here, measure them for the payments of royalty and also um, for the purpose of trucking. So one on one is that we must also recognize our practice in Guyana is not clear felling. Based on the quota system, the GFC also have the quota practice, which were also um, highlighted earlier, where trees are allowed to cut above certain diameter size. The minimum diameter size in Guyana is 35 cm. And apart from the cutting the diameter size, we also have rules where no two trees can cut close to each other less than 8 meters if they're between 35 and 40 cm. In addition to our GIS capabilities, the FRU is also the unit responsible for carrying out our MRVS work, so how we monitor, report and verify forest change. So as part of our MOU between Guyana and Norway, our unit is responsible for carrying out the spatial analysis of annual forest change and what causes these change or drivers of change. So for example, we have different drivers of deforestation and drivers of degradation. Some of these might include mining, infrastructure from mining, fire, or also degradation events like for example forest harvest, shifting agriculture, or other natural events that may cause degradation. Our guidelines and our procedures have been audited by independent, internationally renowned auditors and have been found to be very, very robust, transparent, and easily implementable. Because in addition to formulating these guidelines in a very collaborative way with stakeholders, we also provide training for the understanding and implementation of these guidelines. This training is done at two levels, at the level of the Ghana Forestry Commission and at the level of the Forestry Training Center, which is a dedicated school established to promote 
reduced impact logging. Significant emphasis is placed on ensuring the commission is staffed with the most suitably qualified individuals. Our staff, especially our field staff, have to undergo a number of training activities in specific courses um, so as to help them along with these special courses that they do at the Guyana School of Agriculture, Manrico and uh, Eskibo, um, where they teach specialist forest, forestry programs. We also do specialist um, courses to provide them with the kind of knowledge and the kind of skills that are required for them to function in forestry. In May 2002, the Forestry Commission um, aligned itself with the Forest Product Association of Guyana and the Tropical Forest Foundation and set up the Forestry Training Center Incorporated. And the objective of this training center is to provide vocational training for people in the, in the sector who do the work every day, who do forest management every day. The people who have to measure trees every day, or the people who have to do forest inventory, or the people who have to build roads, or culverts, or fell trees. And um, so we target the staff of the Forestry Commission, we target operatives in the forestry sector, um, people who work with forest industry, we target uh, communities, we target um, machine operators, we target NGOs and so on. So those are the people we train, the people who are involved every day in some aspect of forest practice. The Guyana Forestry Commission currently has a, a program, a career building program in forestry, where we attend to schools, several schools across Guyana, educating school students and people about forestry in Guyana. We're currently um, engaged with institutions such as Linden Technical Institute and the Burbis Technical Institute. The Commission also works closely with the largest local lobby group in the industry, as well as other national, regional and international partners. We also collaborate with uh, the Forest Products Association, which is the major lobby group of the industry. We work collaboratively with them. We have several technical meetings every ever so often, where we would address issues of concern that are raised by stakeholders. And we normally will come to very amicable solutions in the interest of taking the industry forward. In addition to the Forest Producers Association, we have about 70 plus community forestry associations throughout the country and in excess of 500 small operators who we interact with on a very regular basis. Our dialogue also extends to the international community where we have constant dialogue with entities such as the FAO, the International Tropical Timber Organization, WWF, CI, etc. So all in all, I, I would say that the Guyana Forestry Commission has a very good stakeholder relationship with local persons as well as regional and international bodies. We encourage pro exporters and potential exporters to visit with us and to, dis to discuss their, what products they have to export so that we can be of assistance to them in possibly finding a market for those products. In addition, if we receive an inquiry from an overseas customer about wanting to purchase a, a product from Guyana, we would look up our, look up to our system, the and try to match the, that order with local producers. The Guyana Forestry Commission will continue working to strengthen key areas of its operations and remains committed to working closely with all stakeholders to ensure that there continues to be full compliance with regulations governing the sector.